feel like the whole world might be on fire. Maybe it's time for you to learn some R. We're going to get started with some basic operations in R. We'll learn about how R is object oriented. We'll learn about how it handles data and vectors. We'll learn about how slick functions are and even write our own. And then we'll get into the different objects and classes of data, numeric and character and factors and all the different ways that R stores data and how we can query our data sets. These are the basics that we need to get into how to start manipulating data in R so we can do our analyses and make some pretty graphics. So with that, let's get started. So here are how things look when we get started in R Studio. We have the console, which is R over here on the left. This is the blinking cursor and the prompt. R is expecting us to send it commands. In the bottom right, we have our file structure or folder tree for our working directory, if you've set the working directory. And you can see that we have here the introduction folder. We'll open that. And we can see the very basic intro.r is the script that we're going to go over right now. And we see the script pop up over here to the top left. Now with r, anything that has this what the kids call a hashtag or a hash symbol, a pound sign, or what I believe is technically known as an octothorpe. This is interpreted by R as a comment. It will ignore everything behind it. So we can run line 10 here and it'll ignore line 10 and then immediately run line 11 and return the sum of two and two which is, of course, is four, and R will ignore anything that follows a comment even behind a operation that it can run. So this is a great way for me to give some comments to you through the script on what to think about or maybe what the script is trying to do, and it's a great way for you to take some notes as you work through the scripts yourselves. So we're just going to show some basic mathematical operations that R does. If you could just be run as a calculator, we have added two and two. We will multiply two and two. We'll add six to the product of two and two. R understands the order of operations and it respects parentheses as well, just as anything that we would expect. One of the Defining features of R is that it is object oriented. What that means is that it uses character strings, in this case here, answer, to represent stored information. So in this case, we have on the right hand side a mathematical operation, and the result of that is going to be assigned to the string answer such that when we go forward anything such that going forward answer is itself is essentially a variable that represents the results of this mathematical operation. I'll often refer to this as the assigner. It's a left pointing arrow that is equivalent to an equal sign. An equal sign will perform exactly the same way in R. I prefer this one though, even though it is an additional character, because I envision everything that's on the right hand side being poured into the object on the left hand side. So we will run this line and assign the results of that operation to this text string answer. We see that this has been added to the global environment up here in the upper right hand corner. We see that we have answer and uh, a numeric value. Even without this up here to look at, we can query R and see what uh, the answer is. And as any fruit who knows where his towel is at is aware that the answer is 42. 
I'm not sure what the question is, but maybe we'll tackle that in a later lesson. So now answer represents this value 42. Anytime we use answer, R is going to understand that to be the value 42. So we can use that in place of a numeric value in an arithmetic operation. We've multiplied answer by 2. And just as above, we can store the results of that arithmetic operation in a new answer and query that as well and see the product of 2 and 42, of course, is 84. We've seen it here, and we've added it up in the upper right to the global environment. If you're ever in a position where you want to see what's in the global environment, what you've loaded, ls, close, open, close, parenthesis, show that we have answer and new answer. This command gives us what our studio, the IDE, tells us up here in the corner. So now let's talk about functions, which are basically just objects that R has that store specific mathematical or statistical or plotting operations that are basically just shorthand for us to get some operation done with R. One that's very common for researchers to use is they're often calculating mean as a measure of central tendency which arithmetically, of course, is just the sum of a number of observations or data values that are divided by the number of observations. So here we have five values that are being added together, and then we're dividing that by five. And we can see um, that the arithmetic mean of those five observations is 17.2. Now we can store these observations as an object as well in what is known in R as a vector. Now here we're using our first function, actually. Our first function here is a rather diminutive looking one, C. It shows, though, the basic structure of a function in R. You have the function itself, and it is always followed by an open parenthesis and it operates on everything that is between those parentheses. Functions contain arguments. We give the function arguments, and those are the things that the function works with to do its computations. And in this case, the function C is a concatenate, and its arguments include any number of values Arguments in R are always separated by commas, so we see the five values here separated by commas, and it is just going to store those as a vector. If you want to see more information about any function in R, you simply go to the console at the prompt and type in question mark, the function, here we have C. And then over here in the bottom right pane, we've gone from our files tab to the help tab. The help files in R are actually very helpful. Once you get a hang of the language of R and the, the structure of, of functions and arguments. So always at the top, you see the function and the package that it's in. This is in the base package. This is the default set of functions that come with R. We have a descriptive title of it. We're going to combine values into a vector, which is what we just talked about doing, or a list, which is another object that R will store data as. We see a, a general description about it, usage, so you can see here's the function, the two parentheses, and well here's the arguments down here and so you can go right below usage is arguments and we see that the ellipsis here means objects to be can get concatenated and that's exactly what we had put in here is we put in our five observations separated by commas that we wanted to concatenate and, and combine into a vector so there's more information details about it about the function and 
you'll see the values is what comes out of it and some other information and examples at the bottom that one can run to, to see the different types of, of functionality of the function. And so this is uh, the standard layout. Every R function has a help file with all of these pieces of information. Okay, so we can create our data vector here, store that as data. We go up here, we can see that it is now in the environment. We have a numeric vector, uh, goes from observations one through five, and there are the values. Again, we can see that in the R console by just running it, and there the vector is with our five values. And now if we wanted to determine the mean of data of these five observations, we might think that we would just divide that by five. That's what we have done previously. Uh, we've had this five as a divisor here. And we see in this case that it's actually divided each observation by five. This is what we told it to do. R operates on vectors. It's called, it's a vectorized language and you will see this is the main philosophy behind how our tidyverse functions work. This is a way that is very computationally quick. So it really reduces the processor time for R to apply these operations along a vector. And this will be very meaningful for us later, but for right now it might seem a little confusing, but we just need to understand that this operation is being applied to every observation, every value in the vector to get what we wanted to do above where we added them all together between the parentheses and then divided by five, we will use a function called sum, which is going to summarize all observations in the data vector and then divide it by five, which is what we want to do arithmetically. Again, we see there that we have 17.2. Now I know this would never be your fault, but sometimes if the protocol calls for five observations to be made, sometimes only four come back in from the field, maybe one wasn't done, maybe a sample bag got lost, a data sheet blew away, there was an entry error at the computer, and again, I know it's not your fault, it's always somebody else's fault, but be that as it may, you might have an instance where you need to calculate the mean of four observations and not five. This is what I call an example of hard coding where if we just did as we did above, where we store our data as a vector, and then we calculate the sum and divide by the number of observations that we intend to have, we've calculated our mean to be way lower than it actually is because we've divided four, the sum of four observations by five. One of the best things we can do with R is allow it to calculate all the parameters itself. So in this case, we're allowing it to calculate the sum of this data two vector, but we're telling it how many to divide by. It's better if we let R both summarize the vector or find the sum of the vector and determine the number of observations. We get that with a function called length. You run length of the vector and we see that it's five. Something like count, which is a function in other packages in R, count might make more sense, but length is very logical in that our data are stored as a vector, which is a series of independent observations. And so querying the length of that vector is essentially a count. It tell us how many, tells us how many observations are in that vector. So here we have programmed 
a means calculation by summarizing, finding the sum of the observations in that vector, and then dividing it by the number of observations or the length of that vector. And there we see our 17.2. We can do this on our shorter vector. Our other one was four because again, not your fault. Somebody, some observations, some data didn't get entered. I understand, not your fault. We can take the find the sum of that vector and then calculate its, divide it by its calculated length. And there we see it is higher than that 14.2. This is actually the arithmetic mean. Now, of course, this is a very common function. We've just worked through this as a demonstration, but R has a built-in function that is both summarizing and determining the length of the data vector it's in mean. We can see that there, boom, there's our 17.2 as the mean of that original five observation vector. So those are functions and we can actually go and write our own, which you might find uh, pretty crazy to be doing on your first run through R, but it's actually very simple. Here we're going to create a new function called meaner. It's important that when you start writing functions and when you start creating objects, try to avoid naming your objects existing functions. You wouldn't want to store the mean as some data as mean because mean is a function in R. So if your value overrides a function, um, you're just setting yourself up for some issues. So here we have capital M meaner, not something that R actually has. If you want to look, you can go down to the console. We'll type in meaner. No documentation found. So that's not in R. It's not a value. It's not a function. It's a free character string that we can use here. And so we're going to pour into Meaner using our assigner here, the following function, which is going to operate on just one variable X. So X is going to be our data vector. Anything that's between these curly braces is understood by R to be a function. So we can see it's the same as our previous mathematical operation here, our arithmetic operation where we're just summarizing the vector, determining the sum of the vector, determining the number of observations in the vector, the length of the vector, and then dividing those. So there's three things happening here. And all we've done here is just generalize it. So it's going to do this on any vector x that the function feeds to it. So we can run that now. So we see meaner show up and we have it over here. So it's in our global environment now, but it recognizes it as a function because it has the curly braces in it. And we can run that again and just see it. And that's exactly what we put in, into to meaner. So we've stored that, but it knows that it's a function. So we can apply our new function to our original data vector. And as we expected, it's the same as before. And this is obviously kind of a trivial example of creating a function. Why are we creating a function that already exists? You probably wouldn't ever want to do that, but maybe you want to enhance the capabilities of a function that already exists by tucking it into a function of your own. R comes with a lot of functions. It's almost infinitely extendable through packages that users around the world have written and made available. And we'll talk in just the, the next segment about how we access and, and install and use those packages. But you might come up with, to something where there isn't a function that does exactly what you need and you might want to create one. So we're going to do one here that personalizes our output for us. We're going to redefine meaner. We're going to update it with function X. And you can see that it's going to know that it's a function because we have these curly braces here. But now we have three parts. Before we just had this 
single arithmetic operation, pretty easy to follow, so we keep it on the same line. Here we have three distinct operations that I've put on separate lines. And R is going to just include those. It's going to know to include those because it's going to go line by line until it finds that the curly brace has been closed. So the first thing it's going to do is that basic arithmetic operation where it's going to find the sum of the vector, find the number of observations in the vector, and divide the latter by the former and store that as m. Here I'm using the equal sign in here. I myself often use the equal sign when it is a value and not a vector or an object that's being stored or poured in, but that's just my own preferences for syntax inside functions when I'm storing a single numeric value or character name, then I'll use a equal sign. And in, in this next line, we're going to create a new object M1, and we're just going to paste a exclamation point with no space or anything. You can see this step here is uh, there's nothing between those two quotation marks. So we're going to take our mean, and then we're just going to add some emphasis on it. We're just going to be a little more enthusiastic, store that. Now there's two objects that are created by this function. Uh, we have an M stored, we have M1 stored. So to make sure that something actually comes out of our function and we need to know which one that is, we'll have return M1. So M will just only exist while this function is running and then uh, M1 is what we will get out. So let's update meaner right here. Again, it's, it's still living over here in our global environment because um, we've, we've only updated it and now we will run it on our vector and we see it 17.2 but we have our emphasis our enthusiasm for writing functions is expressed in the output here you can see that m and m1 went away they are they, well they never existed they were never brought into the global environment they just lived in the, the span of that functions operation So there's a very basic introduction to how R works. In the next segment, we'll talk more about the types of data, how data are stored, and how we query different parts of a data set. Well, hey, there's lesson one, a little bit about how R works, just some really basic functionality. Take a little break and then go get started on lesson two, which will get into the various data classes and the various ways we store data and call it out of our data sets. Cheers. This week has been brought to you by the following base functions. C, sum, length, and mean. And of course, brought to you by the letter R.